Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to be checking out an NVIDIA 9600 GT, a PNY Verto model. This is a mid-range GPU launched in early 2008, featuring 512 megabytes of GDDR3 on a 256-bit memory bus with a core clock of 650 megahertz and a memory clock of 900. When I received this card, it was pretty damn dirty, so I had to do a teardown and thoroughly clean it, including new paste, and the only issue I have with the card now is the ungodly fan noise. Otherwise, the card performs pretty well. So let's jump into some games and check it out. I'm showing the FPS and frame time graph in MSI Afterburner on the screen. Since we're not comparing this to anything, the lows are pretty irrelevant and they weren't logged. The test system is an FX8350 on a Sabertooth 990FX motherboard with 8GB of DDR3 at 1866, running Windows 7 64-bit on a Samsung SSD. The driver used is version 342.01 and all captures are taken with an external capture card. The first game up is Half-Life 2 from 2004, at 1080p with the settings at the highest they would go, with 16x AF and 8x MSAA and Full HDR enabled, the frame rate remains over 70, as it should. Next is Left 4 Dead 2 from 2009, and at 1080p with the highest settings, 16xAF and no AA, the FPS remains solidly over 60, so that's a decent showing for this GPU. Next up is Tomb Raider from 2013. This game always seems to run well on older hardware, but I'm still surprised how well this 9600 GT did here, especially with only 512 megabytes of VRAM. This is also one of the games where a DX11 would work well. This is at 1080p, settings at normal except textures which are set to high, and 16xAF and no AA, we get pretty close to sticking that 30fps mark. Even when it dropped below at times, it was still very playable and reducing the resolution to 900p would certainly get you over a constant 30 fps. So here we have Doom 3 BFG Edition, which is a 2012 remaster of the 2004 game with Doom 1 and 2 included, and even though it's remaster, I still expected more from it. At 1080p high settings, the frame rate was all over the place and at times dropping down into the teens. It also didn't feel all that smooth, but I'm sure the 2004 version would probably run at its max FPS. Going back again to 2004, we have Far Cry at 1080p with the highest settings and it just breezes through it. With the FPS well over 100 and amazing looking graphics, there really isn't much else to say.
Here we have Fear from 2005, and it was a pretty demanding game at the time. We're running at 1080p with all the settings at maximum and no problem at all. The FPS does drop below 60 here and there, but to tell you the truth, it isn't even noticeable. So now we're jumping ahead to 2012 with Hitman Absolution, also a pretty demanding title, and we managed to get it to run at 30 FPS at 900p with medium settings, 2xAF, no AA or SSAO, so that was actually a better result than I was expecting. Target is within my vicinity. Yes, I'm positive. Sir, there is no reason to have that in your hands. Put that... Use cover to protect yourself from enemy fire, or try to slip away and hide. Running allows you to relocate quickly. So we'll go ahead a little further to 2013, here's GTA 5. At 1080p, normal settings, no AA or AF, uh, the frame rate is stuck in the low 20s, dipping into the teens occasionally. But if we drop the resolution to 720p, however, you can see it makes the game far more playable. Hey, you don't see me driving here? Of course, this video wouldn't be complete without Crisis, and at 1080p medium settings, high detail and object quality in water, 30 FPS is no problem. So to conclude, we'll have some Postal 2 running in the background. This would have been a decent car to own in 2008 to play pretty much anything. At an MSRP of around $190, it was apparently a great value. In only a few months, the GTX 200 series cards would launch, and while costing significantly more, it was a major improvement in performance, but I would think that that really shouldn't detract from the fact that the 9600 GT was a good value in its time. If you guys have made it this far in the video, I do thank you, and here's what we got coming up to look at. These are some GPUs I've picked up recently. All are untested, and the only one that I've tested so far, that because I got it a while ago, is this GTS 250, which works. This one right here happens to be a Radeon HD 4850. This little bugger right here is a GeForce 9800 GT. This one, of course, it says right on the front here, I believe, is 8800 GTS. And this is a Radeon uh, 6450, and I believe it's a 5450. These are just two shit ones that were in there, and they probably work because those ones always do. And this one right here is one I really hope works. X850 XT. So, we got some GPUs to test, so they'll be coming up. So I hope you guys found this interesting, and as always, I will see you on the next one. Definitely need more of that.
Look out! Hey! Oh. Uh, hey! 